Good evening. Welcome to St. Thomas the Apostle Church as we celebrate the Feast of All Souls. Um, one thing we all share in com common, we're all here as mourners, right? We all grieve over the death of someone we love. However, we grieve not in despair, but in a spirit of hope, knowing that death is not the end, but rather the transition, the gateway into everlasting life. And it's in that spirit of hope that we gather this evening. I thank you for the gift of your presence. I thank those who are joining us, um, you know, through our online app. Of course, this is being um, live streamed. And I continue to ask you to follow the protocols, wearing your mask, keeping the social distancing. And I invite you to please stand, and we'll join together in singing our gathering hymn, I Know That My Redeemer Lives, found on your song sheet. Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather together this evening to give our thanks and praise to our God in this celebration of the Mass. We're mindful of the presence of Christ among us. We're mindful of the communion of saints with us as we give God our thanks and praise. To prepare ourselves to encounter Jesus once again in these sacred mysteries, let us together acknowledge our sin, seeking God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you continue to nourish and strengthen us through your word and sacrament. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you send us, your disciples, into the world to be your witnesses, signs of your presence and love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us into everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, glory of the faithful and life of the just, by the death and resurrection of whose Son we have been redeemed, look mercifully on your departed servants, that just as they profess the mystery of our resurrection, so they may merit to receive the joys of eternal happiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going from us utter destruction. But they are at peace, for if before men, indeed, they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine, and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge the nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Are you not aware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, so shall we be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ raised from the dead dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. May the spirit of the gospel always be upon our minds, our lips, and our hearts. Jesus said to the crowd, Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day. The good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life and I shall raise them on the last day. You know, what a gift we have in the gift of our faith to be able to have that long-term perspective rather than just being caught up in the here and now, um, realizing that we are meant for union with God. You know, whenever... You know, All Souls Day come, comes around, I cannot help but think back of the families within our parish community who have lost loved ones this past year. As I thought of the deaths of the young and old from our parish, again I realized I buried people that were good friends, 
I buried people that I did not know so well. Yet, no matter what the situation, we as a church continue to proclaim that our God is a God of life. For Jesus conquered death forever by his resurrection. You know, as St. Paul says in the second reading from Romans, if then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ raised from the dead dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. So we're dealing with grief. Our world is dealing with the reality of the pandemic. The COVID-19 virus, it gets people to think, hey, I could catch that virus, I could die. And that's true, we could. And all of that, you know, when we think of death and reflect upon the reality of death, it helps us to see things a bit more clearly as to what really matters. And nothing matters more, of course, than our relationships, our relationship with God, Jesus, the Spirit, our relationships with each other. And the reality of death helps us to see that so clearly. We can get caught up in so many things that really don't matter that much. But our relationships with one another, with our God, clearly do. So our celebration on All Souls Day is an affirmation of the Christian belief in life after death. But it's more than that, because on this day, we also pray for those who have died. An activity that reveals that death is not a passive state, but an actual process in which we participate. Um, the theologian of the third century, Tertullian, he mused about an intermediate place of rest between here and eternity. Such a place it would be necessary for about all of us, for only the holiest among us die entirely at peace with God and is able to come into the divine presence unimpeded. The Eastern Church has referred to this intermediate stage as a time of growth. The Roman rite has used the term purification or purgation, thus purgatory. And purgatory is the final cleansing of our human imperfection before we enter the joys of heaven. Occasionally I'll be asked the question, um, do we still believe in purgatory? And purgatory does exist, not because it's dogmatically nailed down in sacred scripture, but it's impossible to formulate a science of love and community without it. Purgatory is the stage of loving, initial pain of entering into community. Mystics have classically defined purgatory as the pain of letting go of a lesser love, a lesser life, in order to accept a deeper love and a deeper life. It's a pretty good definition, isn't it? calling us to put our ultimate trust, our ultimate hope in God's presence. Because so often, at times, we can put it in something less. When I visited with others about this topic, many will say, you know, I know I need cleansing. I'm too self-centered, I'm too selfish. I'm not ready to see God face to face now. And this is a sign of someone who is aware of himself or herself. And in reality, almost every one of us will need some measure of cleansing and purification so that we can more readily enter into the heavenly feast. Don't think of purgatory so much as a place of separation from heaven. No, it's, it's part of the journey to heaven, to prepare us 
to encounter God um, fully face to face. And we are cleansed when we can surrender to the awesome mystery of God's mercy and love that's so clearly revealed to us in Jesus. So tonight, um, we gather in grief. We still grieve the death of loved ones, but we grieve in a spirit of faith and hope, knowing that our God is a God of love and mercy, and we surrender our loved ones to our God, placing them in God's care and God's love, grateful for the gift of their lives, praying that they may experience the fullness of eternal life. So it's in that spirit we gather as people of hope, as believers in the promise of the resurrection. I invite you to please stand. Rejoicing in God's promised gift of salvation, let us now wait upon the Lord in prayer, interceding for the living and the dead. For the church, may God give to all who have received Christ and believe in Christ's name, life without end, and the light no darkness can cover. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, may the God of life inspire world leaders to end the violence that casts its shroud over peoples and nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community, may the bereaved and those dying members of our community find consolation and strength in the resurrection of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, may the sacrament of anointing and our community's compassion bring them healing and strength, especially Mary Kay Byroth, Don Brokaw, Paul Lacey, Chelsea O'Neill, Vern Boyer, Jack Payton, Jim Trithall, and Dolores Etcher. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have experienced the loss of a child during pregnancy or in infancy, may Christ, who is compassion, bring healing and strength to all who experience untimely death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Liz Law, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the dead, those written in our Book of Remembrance and those we have lost this year, especially. At this time, I invite you to please be seated. Alex Hurley, John Gone. Jane Richardson. Anne LaCroix.
John Michelotti. Betty Rownick, <laughs> Kenneth Kenny Rambold. Pamela Kunes Scott. Casey Burrows. Darcene Butler. Jean Holland. Lynn Romer. Jesse Kelly. Jim Downs. Francil Richter. Chris Evans. Kathleen Walton Hagen.
Jackie Allard. Bob Becker. Anton Catervas. Christy Pish. Robert Bob Scher. Nicole Kaderna Heine. Father Charlie Gorman. <laughs> Jean Smith. Chad Rockman. Holly Peterman Zeibel.
Robert Kent, Robert Bob Stricker. <laughs> Sally Drorshack. Judith Hooley, John Jones. Phyllis Bergeron. Mary Chris Abel. Rod Hartman. Teresa Terry Whitman. Sandy Bass. Sandra Thorne. Marge Rufus.
inhaling bass flute. Clifford Cathall. Gail Lair. Judy Cole. Elaine Cummings. Jamie Studer. William Shannon. Robert Yurick. Paul Winhofer. Connie Rasky. Terry Larkin.
different hand song. Mary Vincelet. Mary McEnany. Bob Peterson. Lavina Bonnie Brocious. Bertha Kazmierski. Catherine McKinney. Patricia Sullivan. Catherine McKinney. Alan Peterson.
Patty Helfer. May all who share the Eucharistic feast on earth celebrate the feast of the Lord of hosts prepared on the holy mountain. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, you promised a joyful feast on your holy mountain and sent your Son, the Word made flesh, to wipe away every tear, to destroy the veil of death, and to guide us to your glory. Bring all the faithful departed to share the victory of the risen Christ. Give us strength also on our earthly pilgrimage to deny ourselves, to take up our cross, and to follow Christ, gladly losing our lives for Jesus and for the sake of the gospel. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our preparation song is These Alone Are Enough. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice into your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy children. Almighty and merciful God, by means of these sacrificial offerings, wash away, we pray, in the blood of Christ, the sins of your departed servants. For you purify unceasingly by your merciful forgiveness those you once cleansed in the waters of baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Yes, yes. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we must drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. thy will, will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be. Our communion song is Unless a Grain of Wheat.
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of your only begotten Son, who is sacrificed for us and rose in glory, we humbly implore you, O Lord, for your departed servants that cleansed by the Paschal mysteries, they may glory in the gift of the resurrection to come through Christ our Lord. Amen. You know, one of the um, descriptions of the Mass, which we just celebrated, is it's a celebration of heaven and earth. So it's just not us who are here. Those who have gone before us are with us as well in this celebration. And that never hit me more clearly until the death of my own parents, because I truly feel them um, each time I gather um, with others around the Lord's table. I know I'm not alone, that they are here as well. So this is a celebration of heaven and earth. Always remember that when you gather for Eucharist. And then secondly, it's very clear you do not, you're not the only one grieving, right? Take a look at those candles. Um, we all share in grief together. It's a part of life. But we support each other in a spirit of hope, once again, knowing that death is not the end, but rather the transition into everlasting life. And it's a journey we'll all get to take someday. So look forward to it. All right. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. As we go forth, let us sing, O loving God. <laughs>